guy looks like he might be normal looking. Now if he just, 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 uh, turn around. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen this much eye on a face since Clannad. I watched the first episode of literally everything this season, except the sequels to shows I didn't watch or catch up with. Even if there's absolutely nothing to say about it, I'll think of something. Let's see if we can get this done in under 15 minutes. Failure. Let's just get this out of the way. I know all these animes have more than one episode out. I'm late. It was a lot of shows. Fight me. Now then, are you a person who tries to keep up with every anime each season? Do you try to give each show three episodes to try and find which one to stick with? I don't. That was all fine and dandy and feasible back in 2005, maybe. But there's too much crap to sift through nowadays, like actual steaming piles. And I used to watch every piece of dog turd that was flung at my screen back in high school. But who has that kind of time anymore? So here I am providing a very condensed review of every anime this season based only on the first episode because I'd still like my brain to work after this. Will you get more utility out of this and people who make more informed reviews like Giguk and Mother's Basement? No. But you saw the title, I can't imagine you expect it otherwise. Let's get started. Ah, now this is the garbage I've come to expect from the isekai genre. Some nice guy with a tragic story that's bullied and scorned by everyone finds a magic door that takes him to another world, where he gets OP abilities that make him rich and hot. All tucked nicely behind paragraphs of exposition. Even for a power fantasy, this has to be the laziest premise I've seen since the smartphone thing, which also has another season. We already know that the isekai genre has devolved so far that recommending the show to anyone would be akin to a war crime. If you tell me it gets better after the first episode, you're full of shit. Wow, the technology in Dr. Stone has come pretty far. I, I thought I started Mashal, but they all have cracks on their face. No joke though, the style of this anime gives me old school shonen vibes of things like Zatch Bell. The premise initially seems like it's a heartfelt story about a boy with no magic powers trying to make it out in the world where everyone is magical. But the moral I got out of it by the end of the episode is that humans can potentially get magic powers in the future if we can just implement a small amount of eugenics, which I could get behind. What's a couple of dead kids in the face of supernatural power? I mean, it seems to be working out for them, so I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I've learned from my TikTok comments that people can't tell when I'm joking, so I'm joking. The show seems entertaining, but this is the worst magic I've ever seen in media. I usually expect magic to disintegrate normal humans. The only time I've ever seen someone just beat through magic like this is League of Legends. Also, I feel like I've seen this guy in at least two other animes. I'm not sure why that specific hairstyle is so common. Overall, the story seems very okay, so I'll keep watching. A show that's not about teenagers. Go figure. It seems like it might have an interesting premise. A guy killing his daughter's abusive boyfriend who turns out to be Yakuza. I feel like only in anime will you see people so brazenly bragging about their crimes with no regard to who's listening. Sometimes it seems like they're waiting for someone to be within earshot before they say something incriminating. How else do anime characters always eavesdrop at the perfect time? Either way, there isn't really too much to glean from the first episode, and it was a little all over the place. Like, they don't have a lot of time to make it seem reasonable for the father to kill this man. So they have him overhear a conversation of the guy saying, Hey boss, I know my current girlfriend is alive, but considering I killed my last two, I'm gonna need you to prepare an evac for me just in case. Like, what kind of conversation is this? But otherwise the anime shows some amount of promise. Okay, well, now I'm embarrassed. I spent all that time shitting on the last isekai, and then they managed to make one even worse. Why even show a person's progress of getting isekai'd and then training to become strong enough to save the world? No one cares about that crap. Why don't we just skip the middleman and give you an asshole that already did it all before the start of the show? I don't need to see how he built relationships with all these characters and earned their respect. Just tell me he did and I'll believe you. I mean, he obviously has such a winning personality, so I shouldn't be surprised. What a piece of shit. Don't you love when you look at the Japanese title for an anime and you know for a fact that the English title did not translate it? It seems we've gone one step further and now we have English titles that replace one Japanese word with a different Japanese word. Unfortunately, that was the most interesting part of the show. Like, I don't hate comedy anime. There are actually quite a few I enjoy. And I usually don't ask for much. Just be funny. They got the anime part down, I just would also like the comedy part. And beating the same joke over your head is hard to make funny for 12 episodes. They couldn't even do it for one. So I'll just go back to Osamatsu-san, thank you very much. I was gonna watch a new Pokemon, but I figured I shouldn't embarrass myself trying to make jokes about a series I know nothing about. Yeah, Pokemon wasn't a part of my childhood. So what? I hate turn-based games. And whichever one came out on the Game Boy Advance when I was younger left a deep enough hatred in me that I didn't watch the anime either. I'm such a bad fan that when people talk about the Pokemon song, the first one that comes to my mind is Master Quest. Yeah. Okay, so coolest opening so far goes to Hell's Paradise. And this monotone emotionless guy has the same voice actor as the monotone emotionless guy from Mashal. Not that this guy's a bad voice actor. He actually has quite the range. Not being showcased this season though. An immortal guy that's not immortal, but can be immortal if he tries, but actually can't be immortal against the better sword. Being enlisted to get an immortality potion for someone I assume is not already immortal. 
like him. The premise they let out seems interesting, but there's not a lot to get out of the first episode about how the show is going to be, since they were foolish enough not to introduce all their characters in the first episode. But that's not my problem. What is this episode title? Oh, some guy whose dad runs a cult? That sounds interesting. I wonder where the story's going to go with that exactly. <laughs> They tried to do so much in this fucking episode that it ended up being a jumbled mess. I think they set up like 10 different plot points. Also, what the hell is that thing? They've shown it three times now. Is that some kind of joke? Oh my gosh. Budget is blinding in a different way than usual. Why the hell is the CG so bad when the anime has such beautifully choreographed fight scenes? Oh, it seems all the budget went into animating this one naked child. The opening for this one is actually super catchy. And all cliches aside, the first episode was actually pretty funny. Basically, a guy set a trap for demons that might attack his home, and it accidentally killed the hero that was saving the world. So now he's being forced to use his dead body to try and finish the task. And this guy's a fucking freak. I don't want to know what he's doing with these vegetables in private. I can't imagine it staying this entertaining the entire show, though. It does seem a little gimmicky. I might stick with this one, though. <laughs> Wow, one minute. I feel like nowadays these Isekai are competing to see how fast they can kill the main character and have him reincarnated. Like, what is even the point of the scene? I'm going nuts with this genre. These shows aren't even any different from each other. It's just reskins of the same story. How many more Isekai are there this season? Oh, if you thought a reverse harem would change my mind about Isekai, you were wrong. We could try. It's not the same fantasy trash I just saw five times already, which is a good sign. A girl dies and gets reincarnated as a side character in a novel that's also supposed to die. I think it's supposed to be some kind of political drama or something. And it's not making me want to claw my eyeballs out yet. Probably because it's adapted from a webtoon and not a light novel. But oh my gosh. Exposition. How am I supposed to read all of this at two times speed? My secret to getting through these isekai. Anyway, I'm not going to lie and say I'll watch it. But it didn't seem terrible. So many isekai and the truck doesn't seem to be showing up at all this season. Bitch got fired, probably. Oh, I spoke too soon. Sorry, kid. This guy didn't even get an animated death. The bar just keeps getting lower. So he died, or almost died. And his sister loves him so much that she killed herself to get isekai'd as well. I'll never understand where anime creators get their idea of sibling relationships from. I don't even answer my sister's phone calls. If this were to happen to her, I would very happily help my other sister join her before I do. Anyway, this show... It's stupid. When did incest become so commonplace in anime? Finally, someone getting reincarnated somewhere interesting. And the episode really picked up after we got out of that god-awful fantasy world. Our main character gets reincarnated into a dead boy in the modern world. A boy that, unsurprisingly, people were hoping would stay dead. The setup for this one was fun, and the twist at the end was really exciting. But I'm not gonna spoil it. It's the bad guy. The bad guy got reincarnated, not the good guy. The good guy stayed alive, so his ass is still back in that garbage fantasy world. And apparently the show is made by the same person who made Bakano and Durarara. So the bar is already set pretty high. Okay, anyone who is already watching Demon Slayer will probably continue, so there's not too much to say. But Muzan is so fucking extra. I really do all of this just to meet you and have you give the I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed speech. This guy's not going to be invented for a while, so they should really figure out an alternative method. And I guess all the upper demons we met previously were the most normal looking ones. Like, what is this? Did he choose to be like this or was this some prank by Muzan? Oh, wait, maybe I was wrong. This guy looks like he might be normal looking. Now if he just, 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 uh, turn around. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I haven't seen this much eye on a face since Clanad. Anyway, I'm enjoying the show. Yo, they went nuts with this violin play. From what I've gathered, this show is about a boy being forced to play the violin or his Yakuza father would break his kneecaps. Oh, he's not Yakuza? He's a professional musician. Sure, I gotcha. As a former trumpet player, I can definitively say string instruments are the best choice. There's a lot less spit involved. If you're doing it right. It seems like it could be a decent show, but it looks like none of the streaming services decided to pick it up. Even though I had no problem finding every isekai that's out this season. What happened to this community? Oh, I don't, uh, I mean, I guess it was only a matter of time before the VTuber stuff started to invade actual anime, especially with how obsessed anime fans got with it. But an anime about a VTuber training school is a little on the nose. I'm personally not a fan, but I can see an anime like this being popular. To me, it looks more like the product of an idol anime mutating to survive, like the coronavirus. So let's see how many more of these variants pop up. I guess the biggest takeaway from this, though, is that this is why Wit gave up Attack on Titan. They needed all their best animators to pursue their true passion, which turns out to be CGI idols. So here we have a very common breed of online gamer. One who spends all their time trigger typing in the chat instead of actually playing the game. That aside, it was nice of this girl to ruin her life getting into gaming so she could play with her boyfriend. The show is pretty and it seems like it has good energy, but I'm not sure how I feel about these two characters, separately or together. And I hate romance anime.
So this show's a no-go for me. Actually, let's just speed through all this romance nonsense right now. Insomniacs After School. Boring. I think I got the whole show out of the first episode. And the title. If someone asked me for the anime equivalent of a tumbleweed, I'd show them this. Even the Insomniacs are falling asleep. A galaxy next door? Unremarkable. The supernatural thing they tossed in at the end doesn't help after the 20 minutes I went through of watching paint dry. And why aren't they teaching this little boy to speak? Why is he only saying half of the last word his sister said? Skip and Loafer. I mean, it had a cute opening, but that's about it. I need a microscope to spot the chemistry between these two. Anyone who's actually into romance would never want to hear my opinion on them. And I'd love to stop, but unfortunately there's more. I'm starting to wonder what constitutes romance in anime nowadays. A loner who carries around a box cutter all day and his romance with a girl he's been dreaming about murdering. It seems like halfway through the episode they decided to go for something more cutesy, but the first part leaves a lot to be desired. The red flags in the show are so abundant, I feel like I'm in China. Okay, I don't usually watch the shit with the talking animals, so maybe I'm not aware. But do they usually take this many liberties when making humanoid animals? Like, they're obviously supposed to be stylized after some sort of animal, right? But what the hell is that thing? Anyway, this girl was sent to these animal lands to be a sacrifice. They keep her chained up at all times to these two little balls that she can just pick up and walk away with at any time. They're lucky she's not trying to live. But that's great. She wants to die, you want to kill her. Let's get this over with. Hope it's super bloody. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's oh. So we have the reverse werewolf situation, otherwise known as Inuyasha syndrome, where he becomes a human only during the full moon. Or maybe his was the new moon. Anyway, it makes perfect sense for a plot, right? Why would you want to see the brooding hot guy at all, really? It's better if he's a tsundere lion with razor fingers most of the time. You know what? It's fine. Everyone has their kinks. Leave me out of it. So I think this one is like a gay Oran high school host club, except gay the other way. They work at a themed cafe where they act like lesbians from an all girls school to entertain grown adults, which sounds like some weird fetish shop, but I guess it's fine if they're only pretending to be underage. Oh. Well, I guess this is someone's cup of tea. Not mine. Oh my gosh, when these two characters are on the screen together talking. <laughs> Middle schoolers, slice of life, stupid fucking kids. No, I'm good. I watched and read all of Hayate the Combat Butler, but I never considered watching the author's other work, that Tony Kaku shit, because it didn't look like it'd be good. But now it's got another season, so someone tell me is it good? Both of these girls are trying to act out the same scene, but this girl cheated and brought a whole animation team with her, so she wins by default. The show itself seems to be about a legendary acting troupe and this really amazing budding actress who's trying to help her mediocre friend audition for a spot. Yeah, that one's the main character. The show actually seems pretty interesting so far. The way they show the subtle effects of good acting is way more immersive than other shows. I'm double dipping on the skip beat hate, but you can't come for me twice. And the animation in the show is really smooth. It's just a little pathetic how everyone around the main character notices that she's not very good. But the friend is just cheering her on and not helping her cope with reality. But let's see if that changes. Or I guess we would have if this crazy bitch was actually talking to anyone. So I think one of three things is happening here. She had a friend who died and she went a little crazy with grief. She has an imaginary friend that she still talks to around other people. Or she's possessed. With option three being the only way she's getting into that acting troupe, so. Here's to that. We'll see how that one plays out for her though. I mean, we're seeing it right now in the opening. Hmm. Some alien saw Earth and immediately wanted to disintegrate that shit. And then this idiot convinced her to check it out first before she went to destroy it. Why? We were almost free. Once she saw a bunch of people crowding around a cat video, she should have just turned her ass back around. Oh wait, you're kidding me. These are the things that are gonna save the world? Now don't get me wrong, I hate all animals equally. Very unpopular opinion, apparently. But that's why this premise is physically hurting me. It's all about animals. That's it. They're all over the place. And she's worshipping them, like pet owners usually do. I'm sorry. I have no love for pets. Every time I look into the beady little eyes of my brother's puppy every time it decides to jump on top of me, I resist the urge to punt it across the room. I don't want every video of mine to be a try not to get cancelled challenge, so I'll just stop here. As for the show, Fuck the show. I'm going back to Vinland Saga. They know how to treat animals. This show is set in a post-apocalyptic world where there are kids wandering outside with monsters and kids in a school that's sheltered from that. The art style kind of reminded me of Eden of the East, except much better animated and more relevant. Like random scenes just look beautiful here for no reason. Just random flexes throughout the show. Are the animators gonna last the whole season? It's a great start, but the mystery makes it a little hard for me to tell what it's about from just the first episode. Maybe I'll get a better feel if I watch the next episode. Moving on. Whoa, that is not a good rating. So I have to accept that a show having all the popular voice actors doesn't mean anything anymore. Especially if they're just aiming for fangirls to sell merchandise to. It's not an idol anime, it's about like art or something. 
but it's set in an all-boys school. The characters are doing little musical performances in the show and singing one of the themes. And I'm pretty sure this guy said Kyo's name while staring into his eyes about 20 times in this one episode. So we all know what this is, and I'm not falling for it. Do delinquents just roam the schools of Japan? Like, just set aside any animes that are about delinquents. Do you know how many animes I know of where there's just an entire school of delinquents? Are there really that many? Anyway, so far the show's a little too old school for me. Like, the bad kind of old school. Back in the late 90s and early 2000s, there were so many animes with this exact premise. A guy who does fuck all the entire show and somehow manages to garner a harem of women. Despite not having enough depth to make a decent side character, let alone the main character. I used to eat the shit up back when I was younger because it was all I could find. That's a story for another day. But I already know we can do better. So why is this on my screen? How are you gonna kill a black guy 30 seconds into the show and then tell me it's not set in America? This show's about hunting aliens or something in a very diverse part of Japan. Which sounded really cool until I saw that that amounted to beating it with a lead pipe, shooting the shit out of it, and then nuking it. And we're sure this isn't America? Anyway, I'll give it another episode since it's got quite a few big name voice actors. Even if that amounts to Koki Uchiyama voice acting a fucking squirrel. But it is not a great start. For anyone who is still wondering, this is where all the Adderall went. The government decides to rid the country of anything and anyone considered otaku. Should have done a long time ago. And this show follows a resistance group trying to take back Akihabara. Not the premise I would have guessed from the title. Would Japan turn post-apocalyptic if they tried to destroy otaku culture? I guess the concerning part is that I can definitely see it. And it's funny how the fact that it's also a magical girl show makes no sense and perfect sense at the same time. Though if one magical girl can take out a whole base like this, then I don't know why they haven't won yet. This show doesn't even make a little bit of sense, but I assume after some cocaine, I should be able to give episode 2 a shot. Okay. Okay. I'm not interested. I don't know, man. There's something about the show that isn't jiving with me. I can't quite put my finger on it. I will say that the ta-tas per minute ratio is a bit obscene. Ugh, I need a palate cleanser. What the fuck is this? Is it like a bikini competition? I thought this was based on a game. Is it a bikini competition game? Oh, this is the OVA. Oh, wait, this isn't based on a game. It's based on one of those mobile monstrosities. I mean, gotcha games. I've already got the animal lovers coming for me after this video. So I'm gonna make a strategic withdrawal on the gotcha topic. And it's shameless marketing. So I'll just get back to the anime. Which seems to just be fan service for people that actually play the game. Because I couldn't follow along at all. So, uh, I guess we're good. I say I'm gonna watch one episode and this cheating ass show sneaks in a movie? I'm sure everyone and their mother has recommended going into the first episode of Oshinoko blind. I agree. I'm now going to spoil the first episode of Oshinoko. You've been warned. Okay, an idol show. Not really my jam, but I guess I'll power it through. Oh gosh. Don't tell me. Oh, whew, no truck. I was a little worried there. Fuck. I was not expecting the show to be an isekai. Though, does it count as an isekai if you're reincarnated into the same world? It does for me. It's a weird fucking premise. So both of her kids are reincarnated fans of hers. Also, I'd maybe recommend an eye doctor because I'm seeing some cataract surgery in their future. But it's surprisingly really good. I think over the course of this 90 minutes, the show switched genres like three times. I can see why I needed a much longer episode because the first 30 minutes and the last 30 minutes are so different from each other. I don't think anyone would be talking about it if the first episode was just that first part. And I think this is the best animated thing this season. The characters are really carrying this one for me, which I never thought I'd say about an isekai. So thank you, Oshinoko, for extending High Dive's spot on my payroll for at least one more season. Valuable lesson at the end? Always check before you open the door. I will say the bait and switch of the show is both a good and a bad thing. Like it obviously made for a really good episode, but it makes it really hard to recommend it because no one in their right mind would choose to watch this after reading the description. But you kind of ruin the appeal of the episode if you reveal any more. Two Isaac guys on my list is an all time high. As a side note, I was gonna say that the music video for this opening reminded me of a Vocaloid video, but then I saw that this group used to make Vocaloid music. Do people still like Vocaloid? When I try to introduce new anime fans to it, they act like I made them listen to a baby crying while scratching a chalkboard. Oh, I think this is a kid's show? At least it's colored like one. It seems like it's about a very intense game of tag, where you have to play against CGI robot men. From what I looked up, it's an anime adaption of a video game adaption of a game show. I think that made sense. Anyway, it's fine. They laid on the tragic backstory a little too thick in the beginning, but as long as I don't care about his dying brother, which I don't, then it seems entertaining. Though the most fun I had was watching these security guys chase after this kid on hoverboards that don't seem to be faster than human running speed. Yet another decent show that's on no streaming service. Guess I can't watch it then. And I didn't. Ah, what is that? What's wrong with its eyes? Is that supposed to be cute? 
It looks like a fungal infection. I was gonna fully commit and watch even the stupid TV shorts that came out this season as well, but I was spared due to not being able to find them. But this rabbit thing will be in my nightmares tonight. Okay, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Winner of the first episode wars goes to Oshinoko, who cheated its way to the top with this long ass episode. Loser of the season goes to almost all the rest of it. If you disagree with anything I said, feel free to let me know. But considering I only watched the first episode, I actually think I summarized these shows pretty well. So well, you actually don't have to watch any of them. Trust me, don't even try.